from Austin, Texas. Extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Dell World 2015. Brought to you by Dell. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Go to crowdchat.net slash Dellworld and ask any questions. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, my co-host Dave Vellante. This is theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal and noise. Our next guest is uh, the CMO of Dell, Karen Kintos. Welcome to theCUBE. Really appreciate you, you coming you on your busy me. schedule on the keynote yesterday and today. A lot of action. So I got, I got to ask you, what's your, what's your take of Dell World this year, given the big news last week? Things have simmered down, escalated conversations. Share with us the vibe. You know, I think the vibe has been, has been super positive. We had the opportunity to talk about a number of the announcements that we made in cloud and security and mobility and, and, and big data. And then we're, we were able to address our super important customers around what the announcement between Dell and EMC was all about. Michael's message yesterday was very compelling. He talked about the future, when there's a lot of stuff going on with the EMC acquisition. It's like, okay, where does it all fit? But the message really was forward thinking, yes. future ready, which is kind of a future proof on steroids, if you will. But it really talked about Internet of Things as the headline. Yeah. And then the panel today, we had the NPR technology reporter up there, really talking about some of the advancements, some of the game-changing benefits to society, not just technology messaging. How, is that, how did that come about, and where's, where do you guys go from here with this future-ready message? Well, you know, when we think about the, the, the future of technology, you know, so just a couple of years ago, as our customers would talk to us about some of their ideas, around how technology could help them, you'd think, wow, this is like five, 10 years out. The future is now. I mean, I was in the panel discussion before this um, discussion around the Internet of Things, and I turned to one of my peers who heads up HR, I said, can you believe how much technology has changed in just the last five years? And it's going to continue to change. So we, our, our job, we believe, is make sure our customers are ready for the future, the future is now. We feel like how we approach in this open, agile is the, is the, is the right way to think about it. So Dell has been through so many changes, uh, obviously transforming to an enterprise you know, powerhouse, now of course accentuating that powerhouse-ness with an acquisition of EMC, the, the private, taking the company private. How has the brand changed, evolved, the brand messages over those last five years? as these technology changes and industry changes have occurred? Yeah, it's a great question. So when I moved into the CMO role about five years ago, one of the big priorities I had was we had to evolve the brand in the direction that the strategy for the company was going. And we put a line in the sand and we said, we're going to be an end-to-end -end solutions provider. And we had to make sure that our customers thought about us beyond just the PC. So we've been on that journey now for several years and we've been investing in events like Dell World, where we can bring CIOs in and we can talk to them about our end-to-end -end capability, we can talk about cloud, security, mobility, PC still matters, but how all of these things are connected and how we can help them solve their problems is a big, big part of how we've been transforming the brand. So the EMC acquisition obviously accelerates that to the max. Um, are you done? <laughs> You're never done as a marketer, <laughs> ever done right, as so a marketer. So talk about right? sort of your vision for that brand and how that evolves. Well, I think to your point, EMC has a very, very strong brand, especially on the enterprise side. And when you t take the strength of their brand on the enterprise side, the strength of our brand from an SMB mid-market perspective, when you think about the role of Michael, when you think about the fact that the Dell brand has stu always stood for open and simple and easy to do business with and this pragmatic, get it done, roll up your sleeves, make it happen. The other big theme that I heard this year at Dell World that as a CMO I love is this word trust. And that word came up at least a dozen times as I was talking to our customers and I asked them the question, why do you do business with us? They said, you know what? I just simply trust Michael, I trust you, I know you're going to be around, I know what you say you're going to do, and that matters a lot, so when we can take those, these two great brands and bring them together, 
I think we can do amazing things for our customers. Being a trusted supplier is really one of the holy grail Nirvana positions. Certainly Michael has all the toys if you look at the history of the computer history uh, of the industry, right? EMC, big, great company, customer focused. Right. As you go out to the customers with this go-to-market, you have to kind of engage with a whole nother level of tactical and strategic messaging. Um, Michael and Marius Hasseron, they say it's an all-you-can-eat workload environment internally still, there's a lot of work. People raise their hand, a lot of execution, focus, uh, opportunities. So you have a whole new territory to take down with the brand. What are some of the things that you want to, to do in the next year, two years with the brand to go to the next level? I mean, the messaging's tight right now. I love the, the impact and making a positive society benefit. But to the customers, they want that trusted partner. Yeah. And it's the best time to be a CIO and they want a, to understand it. Right. How do you connect to that CIO? Well, I think, uh, I think largely through some of the work that we've clearly been doing, you know, in terms of outreaches and our messaging. Um, you know, being able to bring a, a future view of technology, but, but back to my point around it's in the here and now. It's not futuristic, kind of Star Wars type of thing. It's, hey, you know what, the way you can use healthcare records today and big data in healthcare and transform the way that mm -hmm. patients are getting treated is happening today in, in, in scale. So you'll continue to see us do that around taking yeah. our, our view of where the future is going and helping them. Clearly, we're going to be working with in, in EMC to integrate how we integrate our messaging and our marketing materials there. Our platform around Entrepreneurs Unite from a branding per perspective, especially around fast-growing mid-market. I was on stage yesterday yeah. talking about the work that we have done to advocate for, in my opinion, the most important customer set in the world to the future of this world yeah. are entrepreneurs. Yeah. They create 70 to 90% of the jobs. When youth are employed, magical things happen, yeah. innovation occurs, great jobs and great businesses are created. So you'll see us do a lot and, with and that. And we love Michael because he's a founder, right? And, and when founders stay around, companies thrive. Right. Big mega deals, you look at the successes, the founders have all been there. Not some transient management team with no institutional knowledge. So I think you guys, are we're really bullish on the deal and super excited. Now the other thing I wanted to ask you, I know you got not a lot of time, is the women in computing has really been a big, powerful um, theme the past two years. We cover women in tech on SiliconANGLE and theCUBE, we were at Grace Hopper last week. You guys have a lot of, a lot of women in computing contributing. We saw the patents up there from engineering to leadership. What's your vision of this movement right now? Because it really is a historic time in the industry. As a leader, you're a mentor. The young yeah. women look up to you. Yeah. What's your vision? You. Can you share some insight into this dynamic? It's really powerful. Yeah, this is a subject that I care a lot about. And, and I, I've cared a lot about it for years. Michael's cared a lot about it for years. We've done some things here at Dell World where we really try to nurture that, that network, if you will. This year, we took it up a notch and we put more kind of structure and more programmatic. What we did is we reached out to that the 250 CIOs that were part of our executive summit, and we asked them to nominate an up and coming woman in their organization, and we said, bring them to Dell World, and we're going to give them the networking with other CIOs, we're going to allow them to network with each other, but equally as important, we're going to have some really engaging, inspiring, truth telling conversations that can really help them to think about how do they navigate their career, but how do they also navigate through what are some natural barriers and obstacles that have stood in women's ways? And that's what we've done. So two questions, how do you operationalize a culture where it fosters this kind of uh, uh, openness and, and inclusive, both men and women as well? And two, advice for young ladies out there, young women, who are really entering in or in energized from computer science to physics to business? You know, Carrie, Le Carrie Lorenz, who spoke at our Women in IT lunch yesterday, the first female fighter pilot in, um, in the U.S. military, in the Navy. And she said to the women, and men in the audience, by the way, there was a good number of men in the audience, she said, you know what, do something every day that just creates this knot in your stomach. <laughs> because if you do that, you will never become complacent and you will try some things that you never thought that, that you would ever try. You will get people's attention. 
Put your hand up and ask for the job. Put your hand up and say, I want that role, I want this, I want to run this project for you because I'm capable of, of doing it. And she was, she's an amazing, an amazing story. She's got a, a, a new book out. She talked about how she overcame some of the obstacles, obstacles like the US government would not allow women in combat. And she, after two years of going through this intense training, um, basically said, you know what, I'm not going to take a backseat role. Yeah. And I'm going to influence my leaders that I can still be an instructor. And when the US lifted the ban, she was the first one in fighting, um, awesome. flying these planes. Karen, we incredible. really admire your, uh, your work, inspired by it. Uh, thanks yeah. for sharing that. You. And, and you know what, we, we're real passionate as well, so continue to do that. Uh, final question for you is, Dell World this year, I know with all the fanfare, which we love by the way, we love, love to analyze and do the commentary, and we obviously know EMC well, but put the bumper sticker on the car for this event. How would you summarize this year's Dell World? What's on that bumper sticker message? I would say it's, Michael, it's Michael's quote, right? Which is, go big or go home. I mean, this is such an amazing time to be a, a marketer in a technology company. CMOs have such insights around digital, big data, and, and everything. Now is our time to really seize the opportunity and the moment to help our customers be great. And technology is at the epicenter of all of what is happening from a transformation perspective in the world. And our job is to help them figure out how to make the world a better place. And that's why I do what I do. Karen Kintos, the CMO of Dell, now the powerhouse in the, in the tech computer industry. It's now about society and other things, all of the big data to infrastructure. Thanks for sharing Thank your you. insights and data on theCUBE. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back with more after this short break from Dell World Live. <laughs>